So now we've got the Dark Guy of Phoenix. Which looks nothing like a Phoenix, by the way. I mean, I know it's on fire, but aren't Phoenixes generally supposed to be orange? I mean, SA2 got it right. Even if the Phoenix in that game was really tiny because it was a Chow animal. But anyways, I'm not here to talk about how stupid looking the Phoenix looks. I'm here to talk about how terrible this boss fight is. Yeah, this boss fight drags on for a while, especially when you first play it. Because remember, most of this footage from the LP is my first experience with the game, to show off the most accurate representation of the game's difficulty. So yeah, it looks simple enough at first. You dose it with water, using the water barrels, which don't respawn nearly as fast as they did when you first saw them. Now this is bullshit. Okay, so this attacks him, but I feel I felt so cheated there. Why did I only hit him once? I was so hitting him that the werehog was literally inside of its model, but it somehow said that I missed? Bullshit. You like have to attack in a very specific part of it. Another thing that makes this awkward is that the camera, like, the camera isn't really very good for this boss fight. Like, when you're trying to climb up those hangar things to get up to the water barrels in the first place, sometimes when you press up to climb up them, you won't climb up. Especially when the werehog's face is visible from the camera angle. So that really sucks. What you really want to do is make it so that you get into a quick time event. I have no idea how to do that reliably in in this Wii version version of it. That really irks me. I really hate failing quick time events. Especially since they're so easy in the Wii version. I don't know exactly when it was. Maybe it was here and I overlooked it. But in one of the quick time events on this boss fight, I failed because it said to press X. I pressed X. And then the X button in, the button prompt blinked and then reappeared with X again. But I must have blinked or something and missed it because I assumed that I had already pressed X. And so I didn't press X for a second time. What kind of design is that? This is why quick time events should never expect you to press the same button twice unless they have, like, one button prompt there and it has the word TWO underneath it. And it counts down when you press it once. I didn't realize that I had pressed it the second time. And like, QTEs are all about random button inputs, it's not the same one every time. But I do like the concept of the the fact that you can do a quick time event to get it to shave down its health bar much faster than if you just attacked it normally. It's just so inconsistent getting the quick time events to happen in the first place. I have no idea what you're supposed to do. I know that in the Wii, in the HD version, I think B is the quick time event starting button for the Werehog. And so you can press that certain times to do quick time events to defeat enemies faster. And the weird thing is, every time you succeed in a quick time event press, a doorbell ringing will happen. And it sounds so accurate to the sound of an actual doorbell that a lot of people have reported like dogs barking and stuff like that from hearing a doorbell sound of all things. I mean, it's satisfying. It does its job, but... Like, it can get annoying. Like, I remember, I remember Poke Captain's LP of this, where they did a quick time event, and they heard, and, and someone joked around, oh, it's, it'll get the door. And it turned out there was actually someone at the door. And, like, they didn't ring the doorbell, but, like, they were just joking around with how a Medibot had actually coincidentally showed up right as the doorbell sound rang. At least it can provide some comedy. But yeah, I, I didn't like this boss at all. Even, like, like I, I think I've only played it like once or twice. But still, like, it's, it's really not very fun. I don't understand why later in the boss fight, 
And I know it's because it's later in the boss fight, but still. I don't know why you have to douse it with water twice. Like, really? Once wasn't enough? It was enough all the other times. And look at how long this boss fight is dragged out for. No boss fight in a Sonic game should last over five minutes. I mean, it is cool that he has all these different cool dynamic animations with dynamic camera angles. Like, that's my favorite part of any boss fight in this game, is all of the, the cool animations for the attacks. But this boss fight drags on way too long. See? I'm trying to climb up, I was pressing the up button. Like, I, was, I was pressing up on the control stick, but I wasn't climbing up. And then the camera had to swing around. But yeah, I, I, like, you throw it twice at it, and I, I don't feel like throwing is entirely all that accurate. Like, it's not really like you lock onto it. That time, the water very clearly hit it, but, be, but because it didn't hit the right part of it, the head, it didn't count. And why does fire have knockback? Fire is a burning gas, not a solid object that knocks you back. Like, it's always frustrating when fire gets you knocked back in any game, because it makes no sense. And, like, I know, it's a Sonic game, but even Sonic games, and games in general, all have their own internal logic to them. If anything can happen, it's hard to care what does. Like, you gotta- can't have anything happen, or it'll lessen the effect of anything happening. But yeah, you dose it completely, and seven minutes in, you can finally finish it off. No boss fight in a Sonic game should last that long. Although, the Werehog definitely does have the best boss fights in the game. Like, it makes sense, right? Like, he's the combat-oriented character. So it makes sense that he has the best boss fights. Like, his boss fights... Well, it's also about waiting for an opportunity to attack, but the entire time you're doing something to get ready for an attack. Like, when you're not attacking him, you're dousing him with water so that you can attack him. It's not like you're just standing there waiting around, dodging attacks. It's not like you're spending a long time boosting after the boss fight, but no matter what you do, you can't make it get an opportunity to attack faster. I think in the HD version, you don't have the still image thing. You have an actual cutscene. Maybe. I'm glad this saved me some time. And this is hardly even worthy of being called a cutscene. There's no dialogue at all. And this kind of cutscene happens over and over and over again. It's, it's like, in, it's more like a cutscene in Zelda, where, like, every time that you beat a boss fight, you get a heart container, then you get the MacGuffin, and then something happens. It's not really a cutscene. It's so repetitive for a Sonic game. Like, I get it. The Emerald is being given back its power. The world is being reformed. So the plot is progressing. And at least there's no stupid jokes, but... Like, it could've... I don't know. See, that looked fast! He swung around and got really fast, like, why couldn't... Why couldn't that have been the case for the entire game? Like, why... He can be fast, but he just isn't. So, the Phoenix was a guardian of the temple. You but must have gone berserk he, when I guess, the emeralds lost their power. yeah, Sonic explains it right here. And I guess he assumed that Sonic was evil. Well, I mean, he I'm looks evil, so. Want some chocolate? Ugh. Every time Chip says or does anything in this game, I'm reminded of how forced he is. So long. He looks so derpy looking there, like... Why do they think- I mean, I mean, from a distance the phoenix looks really good, but it has a, such a derpy-looking face. It's so small and... 
Like, why did they think that was a good idea? I wish- I don't know what's so hard about making the SA2 Phoenix, but bigger. It's not even the right color. This is known as SA55 from the Unleashed Manual. Obviously not the Wii Manual, since I looked in the Wii Manual, and it was like a pamphlet. Like, it barely even told you the controls. Wow, Eggman could really put it down. That is the most realistic looking sub I've ever seen in my life. How much development time was wasted on making that? I mean, at least it gives- at least it adds some characterization to Eggman. Saying that, like, it's his own fault that he's fat. But... Anyways, this is Sass. A lot of people like to nickname him Ergo. Or, I guess, Ergo. How do you pronounce it? Because he constantly says that word over and over again. He's basically a sassy robot. And he's so sassy to Eggman that it honestly makes more... Like, why doesn't Eggman just scrap him? It doesn't really make any sense. I mean, he comes off as intelligent. But all he does is nag Eggman. He doesn't actually contribute to the plot in any way. So, it really just makes me wonder why he doesn't just scrap him. Like, in later games, people think that the later robot, Orbot, is him. Even though, like, he looks more like a prototype, to be honest. I like that he says that. Like, that's actually a good moment. Like, this entire cutscene is the humor that I want to see more of in this game. It's character humor, not character breaking humor. Well, sort of. Eggman really just sits on his chair and does nothing else the whole game. He's not really a credible threat. He doesn't really feel like an actual villain. This entire cutscene just feels like pointless filler. All of his lines are predictable. Like, he's such a generic, cliché villain. And of course, every single cutscene in the game has to have a comedy relief character. Like, really? At least it doesn't feel as forces with Chip. But, yeah. <laughs> Basically, what's going on in this cutscene is... Eggman wants to get Dark Guy to full power so that he can brainwash him, take full advantage of him in his full form. So he's going to make a homing beacon to make all of the Dark Arms aliens... The Dark Eye monsters, I mean... Home in on his lair, so that they can all form into Dark Gaia. And he just assumes that it'll work for him, so betraying him like chaos. Yeah, okay. But yeah, a lot of people make fun of Orbot in later games for being too subservient to Eggman and not sassy enough. But honestly, it just raised more questions than it answered to make up for the whole... I mean, Sass was funny, but... I kind of found him more annoying than anything because of his monotone voice. It was very grating, to be honest. I definitely prefer Orbot because he actually has a... A proper voice. Like, he's not just generic monotone robot. And he, Orbot isn't quite assertive enough to Eggman, but... Like, I don't know, it just... If he was, it wouldn't make any sense that Eggman didn't scrap him. Orbot, is a, if anything, seems more useful than Sass, because Orbot does a whole bunch of non-combat related jobs. Like, collecting the wisps in Cully, for example. But Sass doesn't really do anything other than nag Eggman and laugh at him. And in the previous cutscene, not the one in this video, but the one with Eggman harassing the villagers, it was bad enough that he had gotten a rock thrown at him when he's supposed to be the villain. And he's supposed to take him as a credible threat, because his whole point is to motivate you to beat the game. And beat him. It's bad enough that he was humiliated by the villagers, his own robot laughing at him just seems like overkill at this point. But yeah, anyways, we're finally going to a day stage after two Werehog levels in a row. 